Hi there, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. As you can probably tell, I'm not at ICMA 2021. I'm not wearing my mask, I'm not holding my camera out in front of me trying to record a video while various people walk by in the background and loud music is blaring. I'm back home in Edale in the Peak District, back in my garage, and after a, a few too many days sitting in front of my laptop trying to edit together the 20 videos and get them up on YouTube, uh, I did finally get finished late night on Saturday. Uh, most of that took place on, well really Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Uh, Friday I also flew home from Milan back to the UK, uh, so I lost a few hours. But nevertheless, to get all those videos out before the show ended, uh, I was pretty pleased. And a massive thank you to everyone who has watched them, who has commented on them, who has interacted and asked me questions about them. Uh, I'm really pleased I was able to bring uh, just a small piece of Eichmann to you all. Uh, I apologise looking back for the mistakes I made when I was walking around the stands. Uh, there's an awful lot of bikes to see. I think I saw more than 200 in the end uh, on the Wednesday across maybe 30 stands. Uh, and when you, you've only got a few minutes at each one, trying to get everything right is difficult. So thank you to everyone who's corrected me. Uh, I do appreciate it. Uh, and I'm sure those that read the comments will see that too. Why this video? Uh, well, after putting in all that work to get the other videos done, uh, it just seemed to end. Um, having spent the time at the show and having come home, uh, I've had a bit of time to reflect. I've had a bit of time away from the screen and I just wanted to do this video just to really talk through, I guess, the things that really stood out as a highlight for me. Uh, so I'll start off with the Yamaha R7. Now this was a bike that I really like. I know it's not the fastest. I know it's not the most powerful. Uh, and for those of you who ride sports bikes, you may be thinking, what on earth is he talking about? Well, for me, who isn't really a sports bike rider, you know, I like my trail bikes, I like my dual sports, uh, even adventure bikes. Uh, sports bikes terrify me. Uh, these 200 horsepower machines, uh, which I know I don't have the skill, skill to control, is probably not something I'm, I'm ever really going to get into, not at my age. Uh, I have done a, a day at the Ron Haslam Race School on a, on a 600 before, which was really good fun, absolutely terrifying, loved every minute of it. And seeing some of these smaller sports bikes come through, seeing the R7 based on the MT-07 engine, um, that CP2, the cross-plane engine, you know, I think it's it's not the, the fastest bike in the world and never will be. But if you want a bike like that and you want to enjoy it on public roads, I think it'll be great. I mean, I thought maybe it would be too small for me, but sitting on it, it just felt, felt just right. I loved that uh, anniversary paint job they had on it as well. I'm really looking forward to the R7 uh, coming to my local dealer and giving that a go. The next bike I'd like to talk about isn't actually a new bike, but it's not a manufacturer I see over here very often, and that's Moto Marini. Looking around all the stands, you know, there's lots and lots of fancy new bikes out. I think the Moto Marini Milano has been out for a couple of years now, and it's not quite at the sort of uber inaccessible end of an Italian Exotica, uh, but I just really loved it. As a, as, a, as a big twin sort of roadster sort of bike, um, I just think I just thought the way it looked with that red paint job was just absolutely stunning. Uh, unfortunately, Moto Marini isn't terribly available over here, and I also am not sure about parts and servicing, uh, especially where I am. So if there was one a bit closer, it's a bike I'd love to try, and if the opportunity came up to own one, then hmm, maybe that would be on my list. But there was a lot of bikes at the show. My garage is already very full, uh, so we shall see. The next bike I'd like to talk about is the Aprilia. Touareg 660. This was a bike which I think had a reasonable amount of hype before the show. Uh, there have been lots of videos uh, showing it out being tested uh, and I think most of the specs were available beforehand as well. It's a 660 triple adventure bike. Weighs I think about 200 kilos. I guess it's an obvious competitor to the Tenere 700 but it's about a thousand pounds more here but it does come with a lot more bells and whistles. I did wonder whether it would feel quite small as a 660cc adventure bike, but it really didn't. It was a very comfortable riding position. Some of the extras that come with it, you know, all the electronics package that you, that you don't get with the Tenere, uh, maybe that's enough of a differentiator. Uh, I think my local dealer is going to be getting one later this month, that's December 2021. So I'm really interested to seeing what one is like out on the road. That 660 engine I think has been detuned somewhat from the Tuono and the sports bike. Uh, so it'll be good to see exactly how that how that behaves. The next bike I'd like to talk about is the Herald Brute 500. Their stand was, was tucked away a little bit, and they're a, they're a British company. And for their previous models, they'd bought bikes in, 
and then they'd, they'd tweaked them a bit and they'd added a few bits and pieces and they'd done some of their own styling. Uh, you know, kind of made them their own, uh, but they were nevertheless imported bikes. Uh, with the Brute 500, what they've done is they've made a 150 kilo, uh, 40 something, I think 43 horsepower uh, Roadster. And I think the engine still comes from, from overseas, but they've got their own rolling road, they've done their own map for it. Um, most of the components on the bike itself, they make themselves. And it just looked really nice. I think in these days of 200 kilo everything, um, having a bike, albeit with fairly low power, but also very low weight, that's very comfortable to sit on, that looks really well engineered, uh, I think is a winner. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what they announce at the UK show that's coming up next week. I don't think there's anything major, but I know there's some new colours that will be available for the Brute. So being able to see that up close and just seeing just how it's been put together, uh, particularly with the bolt-on subframe, makes it look like it's going to be the sort of bike that a lot of people are going to be customising. Uh, and I'm sure that, that Herald themselves will be offering new variants of the bike in the future. The very last bike I'd like to talk about was one of my favourite bikes I saw at the show, and that's the Moto Gutsy V100 Mandalo. And I just thought it was beautiful. I thought it was a really, really stunning bike, uh, both in the red and the green. I think I preferred the red, but with that sort of candy apple red paint job and the gold wheels and just the superb engineering everywhere on the bike, it really was a sight to behold. Uh, it was up on a pedestal. Uh, you could get pretty close, but I wasn't able to sit on it. So I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing one when it, when it comes to my local dealer. Um, for me, it looked a little bit 80s. Uh, and that might sound like a criticism, but it really isn't. You know, I quite like those sort of sports tour of flowing lines, like a, like a much updated GPZ or something like that, GPZ for, for that side of the Atlantic. And I just thought it was a really, really good looking bike. It's got so much technology on it as well. It's all hidden away I mean, it's very sleek lines on the thing. Uh, but I believe it's got active aero, not entirely sure how that works or, or how much benefit it provides. But yeah, the fact that some of these innovations are creeping into road bikes is, is kind of interesting, uh, especially in one which I suppose it looks a bit modern retro. But nevertheless, I, I just thought it was a stunning bike. Uh, I put some pictures up on my Instagram account and I've, uh, I've also had that video up on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen it, go and check it out or go and look up Moto Gutsy V100 Mandelo and uh, yeah, see what you think. I think that's it. That closes out my thoughts about EICMA 2021 for this year. Thanks again, everyone who's watched the videos and who's commented on them. Um, I hope it's been interesting and useful. I now get to look forward to the UK motorcycle live show that's taking place next week. So I'll send you my thoughts about what I'm looking forward to at that show in another video. And then I'm going to try and do the same sort of thing as for EICMA, but it'll be much, much scaled down. So there's a few brands that will be at Motorcycle Live that weren't at EICMA. I'll, I'll try and get around all of those stands. I'm thinking maybe nine or ten videos. Again, try and get them turned around in a couple of days so you can get a feel for what's on display here in the UK. Anyway, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. The next bike that I would like to talk about... What is the next bike?